This is a session of 25 slides to model the Common Core State Standards for teaching fractions in Grade 3. It's the first of a series of three lectures modeling the standards for teaching fractions. The Common Core State Standards for building an understanding of fractions are found under the domain Mathematics, Number and Operations, Fractions. The goals recommended by the standards for Grades 3, 4, and 5 are summarized in the nine statements listed here. To accomplish these goals, we'll model each of the standards in this domain in both area models and on the number line. In the slides of this session, the Common Core State Standards are highlighted in gray. We'll begin with the standards for Grade 3. In Grade 3, the standards have only two objectives. The first is to recognize fractions as numbers, and the second is to understand and generate equivalent fractions. A fraction is a number. As numbers, fractions answer the same question all numbers answer. How many you got? Children should realize that a number is an adjective. Number only states quantity. I got a hundred on the test. I got ten miles to go. I got four. For what? Number doesn't tell us what. Only how much or how many. I may have four monkeys or four pennies. I still have four. I could have one half of a large pizza or one half of a small one. I still have one half. Let's begin to develop this understanding of fractions by looking at the first part of the first standard. 3 and FA1 reads, Understand that a fraction, 1 over B, is the quantity formed by one part when a whole is partitioned into B equal parts. All they're stating here, for example, is that 1 half, or 1 over 2, is the quantity formed by one part when a whole is divided into two equal parts. Or one-third is the quantity formed by one part when a whole is divided into three equal parts. b can equal any integer. So 1 over b might be 1 over 8, 1 over 27, 1 over 45. This depends on the number of equal parts dividing the whole. For any denominator b, 1 over b is the unit fraction. To model this first standard, we'll use an area model. Area models are designed to help children understand that fractions represent equal parts of a whole. We can divide the whole into two parts, three parts, five parts, or more, but the parts must be equal. I use rectangles as area models because rectangles are far easier than circles for children to manipulate. And also, it's easy to convince children that congruent rectangles have the same area. It's intuitive. So using congruent rectangles divided into equal parts makes it easy to compare equivalent fractional parts. This is a rectangular area model for one-sixth, or the quantity comprising one part of a whole that has been partitioned into six equal parts. I like to see children make their own area models using construction paper. They can use one color to represent the whole, and then fold a second, different colored sheet into two equal parts to represent halves. As they do this, though, stress accuracy, fractions must be equal parts. Now ask them how many of the folded sheet size would they need to cover the first sheet. When they understand that they need two pieces to cover one sheet, tell them that that means that each part of the second sheet is equal to one of two equal parts, or one half of the whole sheet. They should cut the second sheet into halves and write the fraction one half on each part. Next, children can cut another sheet into three equal parts to represent thirds and then write one-third on each part. 
As they do this, though, continue to stress accuracy. Fractions always represent equal parts of the whole. As you guide children through these models, point out that the bottom number in a fraction always tells us how many equal parts divide the whole. You can also begin to call this bottom number the denominator. Move on to cutting a sheet into four equal parts to model fourths. In this slide, we see an example of two rectangular models, four, one, four. You may want children to represent fourths, sixths, eighths, in two ways, to develop an understanding that even though the shapes are different, the areas are truly equal and represent the same portion of the whole. You could even have them cut one of the models for one-fourth in half and place both halves over the one-fourth of a different shape. Now remember that all they have learned at this point is that a fraction is a quantity formed by one part when a whole is partitioned into b equal parts. We've only considered and named single parts of each of our area models. One part, the single part, represents the unit fraction. Let's move on to the second sentence of the first standard. This second sentence says, understand that a fraction, a over b, is the quantity formed by a parts, each the size of 1 over b. So we're moving from working with one part, or the unit fraction, to multiple parts of b equal parts. To model this, we'll use, of course, the same area models. In the example shown in this slide, we modeled 1 over b as the unit fraction 1 over 4. a over 4 could be 2 over 4 or 3 over 4, 4 over 4 or even more. Because children already have their area models, though, they can place 1, 2, 3, or 4 of the 4 equal parts over the whole to visualize and compare 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and 4 fourths. For students advancing quickly, there are many concepts the area models will demonstrate. For example, some students will recognize that 2 fourths of their congruent rectangles are equal to 1 half, or that 2 halves and 4 fourths both equal the whole. The second standard for third grade, 3 and FA2, reads, Understand that a fraction is a number on the number line. Represent fractions on a number line diagram. Fractions are numbers. Representing them on the number line is only natural. In this slide, I've partitioned a unit on the number line into thirds at the top and fourths at the bottom. Visualizing thirds, fourths, sixths, and so forth as partitions of a unit on the number line begins to instill many concepts that we must introduce over time. One thing children will be able to see on the number line is equivalency. For example, they can see that two halves equal a unit, and that three-thirds and four-fourths also equal a unit. Two halves, three-thirds, and four-fourths are equivalent fractions. In the standards, the number line directive 3 and FA2 is divided into two sections. The first section says, represent a fraction, 1 over b, on a number line diagram by defining the interval from 0 to 1 as the whole and partitioning it into b equal parts. Recognize that each part has the size 1 over b and that the endpoint of the part that is based at 0 locates the number 1 over b on the number line. This can sound much more complicated than it is. I think that's because it melds two ideas into one. The first idea is to recognize that each part of a partition of a unit into b equal parts has the size 1 over b, or the unit fraction. In this slide, I've substituted the simplest fraction for 1 over b, 1 over 2, or 1 half. 
The first idea, then, is that one-half is one part of the unit when the unit is divided into two equal parts. Here, each of the units in division is equal to one-half. On the number line, we see the two equal parts of the unit and that each part is equal to one-half. The second idea is that just like any number, 2 or 19 or 42, one-half is actually a number on the number line. If we begin at zero and measure one-half of a unit, the number one-half is located at the end point. This is simply the way we locate all numbers on the number line. One is located one unit to the right of zero, two is found at two units to the right of zero, and one-half is the number we locate one-half of the way between zero and one. 3 and F A to B states the same thing, but for fractions other than unit fractions. Represent a fraction A over B on a number line diagram by marking off A lengths of 1 over B from zero. Recognize that the resulting interval has the size a over b, and that its endpoint locates the number a over b on the number line. In this slide, I've used two-thirds as an example. I've marked off two lengths, each the size of one-third of a unit. You can see that the number two-thirds is found at the endpoint of the line that measures two of the unit fraction one-third. Once children see these numbers on the number line, they can move on to locate other fractions. An important concept that the children will begin to see is that many fractions are equivalent. For example, the fractions one-half and two-fourths are located at the exact same distance from zero. Because children have already seen in their area models that one-half and two-fourths cover the same area of the whole, Seeing fractions at the same place on the number line reinforces the idea that they are truly equivalent. This is exactly what the standards want us to teach next. 3NFA3 asks us to explain equivalence of fractions in special cases and to compare fractions by reasoning about their size. The standard on fraction equivalence is actually the last standard for grade 3. It's broken down into four sections. The first, A3A, states, understand two fractions as equivalent if they are the same size or at the same point on the number line. Let's begin with our size and area models. Children already know that two halves cover the same area as one whole and that four-fourths also equal one whole. We'll use the area models to reinforce the concept of equivalence because they both cover the same area, two halves and four-fourths are equivalent. After working with fractions equivalent to the whole, students can begin to study any fractions that cover equivalent areas. This, of course, is an area model that compares one-half and two-fourths but hopefully most students have already noticed that two-fourths is equal to one-half. Students should work with their area models frequently so that they themselves can discover equal portions of the whole. At the top of this slide, we're looking at two-sixths and one-third, which both cover the same portion of the whole. So the number two-sixths is equal to the number one-third. At this point, too, asking students to partition different sized rectangles into fractional parts will help them understand that fractions are numbers and define equal portions of a whole. But the size of the portion depends on the size of the whole. A fraction is a number. It tells us what portion of the unit we have, but it does not define the unit. Fraction tapes, which can be folded, and fraction towers are another way to visualize equivalent fractions. If we place a number line under a fraction tower, 
as I did here, the fractions above can be located on the number line. And equivalent fractions, such as one-third, two-sixths, or three-ninths, will be located in the same place. This will lead us to the next part of this last standard. The second part of 3NFA3A is to understand two fractions as equivalent if they are at the same point on a number line. Here I've modeled halves, thirds, and sixths on a number line. Children can easily see that one-third and two-sixths are located at an equal distance from zero. I would say to make number lines of one or two units in length and put them on number line tapes, tapes that children can fold into equal portions. This will reveal equivalent fractions. I would also have a large number line across the front of the room and individual number lines on desks or tables. And begin to repeat the names that we use for the parts of a fraction, the denominator and the numerator. The third section of NFA3, A3C, asks us to express whole numbers as fractions and recognize fractions that are equivalent to whole numbers. Examples given in the standards are express 3 in the form of 3 equals 3 over 1, recognize that 6 over 1 equals 6, and locate 4 fourths and 1 at the same point of a number line diagram. The standards are simply asking us to express integers in fractional form. This is the time to extend our number line models to 4, 5, or more units in length. When children locate fractions on a longer number line, they can see that many fractions and whole numbers fall in the same place. Questions to ask might be, if I have 12 fourths, how many units do I have? If I have 6 thirds, how many units do I have? For those students still more comfortable with area models, have them make enough equal fractional parts to cover several whole sheets. The next standard, A3D, is to first compare two fractions with the same numerator or the same denominator by reasoning about their size and to justify the conclusions, for example, by using a visual fraction model. At this point, of course, comparing fractions with the same denominator using rectangular area models should be something comfortable for the children. For example, comparing the area model of one-fourth with that of two-fourths to decide which is greater should be intuitive. The comparison is also easily done on the number line. If fractions have the same denominator, the fraction farthest from zero is the greatest. 3NFA3D, though, also asks students to recognize that the comparisons are valid only when the two fractions refer to the same whole. The area models cut from the same whole reinforce this concept. The standard also asks us to record the results of comparisons using the symbols greater than, equal to, or less than. So in this standard, we are finally placing fractions in equations or inequalities. Comparing fractions that have the same numerator but different denominators might be best introduced using rectangular area models. Using these congruent rectangular models, children can see that as they cut the rectangles into more and more equivalent pieces, into fourths or sixths or eighths, the pieces get smaller. They will need more of the smaller pieces to cover the same area. As Square Bear would put it, I'd rather have one-half a cookie than one-third of a cookie. Two-fourths is greater than two-fifths is greater than two-sixths. But write it down. And that's the last standard for Grade 3. Note that in this presentation, we've used area and number line models exclusively. Modeling fractions as part of a set, say one of a set of three, has drawbacks. 
First, not all members of his set must be equal. The set of all dogs contains a chihuahua and a great Pyrenees. Secondly, one out of three is really a ratio. It should be conceptualized as such. The standards introduce ratios in grade six. And as we move to number line models, it becomes clear why we should avoid set models. If the number line extends beyond a unit, and children have been taught that one half of a set of four is two, then some may begin to confuse one half with the number two. That's all of the standards for fractions for grade three. I'd say we got that covered.